This conference will now be recorded. Kind of, if I just try to draw my first quadrant here, and I just consider an arbitrary function, any exemplary function, and I call it y equals to f of x. I just try to sketch the graph of this function. For instance, it is giving me a curve something like this. Okay. And I just pick up two nice points over here and I. They're quite far distant from each other, you can see. And that's why you can easily visualize them, the distance between them. Now you can notice here that, of course, it is lying on a plane, these two points. So they're having their corresponding x and y coordinates. Yeah. So I just call them x1, y1, these are the x coordinate, this is the x coordinate of my point P, and I just, yeah. and this is the x, y coordinate of my point P, okay, and this is the x coordinate of your point Q, okay, and this is the y coordinate of your point Q, respectively. I just name these coordinates. I call this as x1, y1, and this one is x2, y2. Okay, this is it. Now what to do? I I want my, I just say that P is traveling towards Q, okay? So presently it's not traveling. They're quite far away from each other. They're, they're just fixed, for example. And I just say that I need to find out the distance between P and Q, so I just try to join these two points by means of a straight line and just going to form a nice chord. All right, okay. This is a chord. And we also name chord as a secant line. I hope you know this. I told you several times before. Okay. So this is the secant line and I need to find out the slope of this secant line because the slope is going to tell me the performance of my point P that how it moves towards point Q. Means how this point shifts its position and reaches here. This thing actually explains the behavior of a function, okay? How the function travels on the curve like this and reaches at point Q. So it, it tells me the change happening point to point on this curve, okay? So what I need, I need to get the slope of this secant line PQ so what I need to do, I'm going to use my slope formula, and you know it is the ratio of rise over run, right? So slope of your PQ line segment is rise over run. So you need to find out that how much horizontal distance this P has covered and how much vertical distance this P has covered so that after that it reaches the position of your point Q, okay? So this is the running procedure, this is the rising procedure, right? So what is the length of this, this, this much segment, okay? So you see it is represented by del x and it is actually represented as x2 minus x1. The big length, uh, the small length x1 is getting subtracted from the big length x2 and that's what you call del x, okay? Same, uh, same story is happening vertically as well, right? So this yeah. is the vertical distance that has been covered. This is called del y. And del y is actually what? It is y2 minus y1. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what uh, how you calculate the slope of your line segment PQ. It's quite easy for you. Why? Because these two points are quite far away from each other. You can easily visualize them. You can easily calculate the distance between them. You can also find out the time period so consumed by point P while reaching point Q because they are quite far away. So it's easy to calculate the time as well. But if I just say that this Q is quite close over here, if its position is over here, how you're going to find the distance between P and Q now? Because apparently it looks that these two points are too close. It appears like a one point. So what you're going to do in such a, a small interval of time, P is be moving towards point Q in such a small interval of time. That's why Q is quite close to each other. So uh, how you're going to find the rate of change in such a small period of time? It's difficult, yeah. right? 
the instant yep. of time is too small so the instant is too small so we call such kind of time as instantaneous time okay so the rate of change happening in such a small period of time can be observed uh, not observed can be calculated or evaluated with the help of derivative now let me tell you how i just come okay. here okay instead of here i let me just remove these these, these workings and uh, do modification on the same uh, on the same uh, graph here okay instead of removing each and everything uh, i don't want to redraw it so now this time q is over here and i just remove this big secant line okay i also remove uh, x2 and y2 as well okay and uh, now what happens this time your q is over here here I'm using different color just to make a difference. Okay, this time Q is over here. Okay, so it is too close to P. It is not overlapping on P, but it is too close to P. Okay, so how you're going to find the distance between two tiny points? Okay, so I'm just trying to draw the X and Y coordinates of this Q point as well. I just say, That Q is here, okay, and the uh, x coordinate of Q is over here. It's extremely, extremely small. You can see, okay, uh, it's too close to your x one. And uh, y coordinate is also too close to your y one. You can notice. Okay, let me go back. Before going back, let me just write down here. This is my x2. This is my y2. Okay. Now you can see that the distance between x1 and x2 is extremely small. Extremely small. Too small it is. So you can say that del x is approaching towards 0. Means the difference is too small. It is not 0, but it is approaching towards 0. All right. So what I need. I need to draw a tangent line here because I am going to consider P and Q just as one point because they are too close, so it appears like a one point, okay? I just yeah. consider it one point and I'm going to draw a tangent line there and then I'm going to calculate the slope of that tangent line. That tangent line slope will help me to understand the rate of change of this function in such, in such a small period of time. So I'm just going to draw my tangent line now. I just say that I just draw my tangent line here. Okay. And uh, that's my tangent line. And what I'm going to do, you can see that del x is approaching towards zero. So now the, the, slope of this tangent line okay can be calculated with the same formula del y by del x but here del x is extremely small so i'm going to explain this thing here by putting a limit concept and limit is telling me that del x is existing but it is too small such that it is approaching towards zero that's the limit that i'm writing and this limit means that I have restricted the condition that del x is not equals to zero. It is getting closer and closer to zero, okay? Hmm. So don't take zero, that's what it means. So once when I apply the limit, this del operation, this del symbol is gonna be transformed by differential operator. dy by dx, okay? I have just transformed this del symbol by differential operator okay so this is what you call the derivative this derivative help you to find out the instantaneous rate of change of any function point to point okay 
all right so it means if yeah. this point over here and then it comes over here that what is going to be the behavior of this function when it moves from this point to this point that's what derivative is going to help you out okay but this is the significance or or uh, responsibility or duty of your del uh, of your differential operator okay or derivative so that's the reason why you calculate the derivative okay, now we are going to approach uh, to our questions and I repeat once again that what is your derivative derivative is actually the slope of the tangent at a particular point on a curve and you can see if I just zoom this thing if I zoom in you can notice that this portion of the curve and this tangent line are almost parallel to each other because they are two small segments. Okay, so whatever the slope of the tangent line is, is going to be the slope of this curve at this point of tangency. Okay, so I, I, uh, you know that in mathematics there is no exact formula to calculate the slope of any curve. Hmm? You know yeah. how to calculate slope of a line, not slope of a curve. So if somebody asks you what is going to be the slope of the curve, you just say that try to find slope of the tangent at any particular point on the curve. So that will interpret the slope of the curve as well at the very same point. Okay, it's like that. Now we just move on and try to see. The curve has equation y equals to this cubic thing. We need to find out the derivative, first derivative. Just get it and tell me the answer already, what it is going to be. The first the derivative. derivative okay. Three oh. x square minus twelve x plus nine. That's the derivative. Yeah. So y prime d y by dx three x square minus twelve x. Yeah. Plus, plus nine. nine. That's right. So. And now they are just asking you to find out the derivative or the gradient of your curve at a particular point whose x coordinate is 2. Okay. So, you see, actually, you need to find out the slope of the tangent drawn at, the, at this cubic curve at the point where your x coordinate is 2. So, X is two. my my cubic curve that we are just discussing right now is ha going to have a shape something like this: x cubed minus six x squared plus nine x. I hope this is the equation. I'm not wrong. Yeah. So you see, it is going to give me a curve something like this okay that's it so if this is your point two here okay so if you just trace uh the point on the curve exactly over here by drawing the projection this is the position where the point is going to lie two two okay at this point you're going to draw a tangent the tangent is going to be downhill to right i need to find out the slope of that tangent that will interpret the slope of the curve as well at this point okay so we just substitute x value 2 in our first derivative equation so 3 2 square the answer is going to be negative because the graph is telling us that the tangent line is downhill to right so this Minus three. Minus three is the answer. There's the slope. Okay. So you see this was curve something like this. This was your two. That's the point on the curve. That's the tangent line. And it's downhill to right, which is having slope minus three. So that's it. Okay. And then find the coordinates of the two turning points on the curve. Now equate this derivative expression to zero, equate this thing to zero, factorize, get the two values of your x. So before doing this, 
you can simplify this expression first if it is possible and then factorize so how you simplify you see three is coming common three is the hcf here yeah it's common so you just equate your dy by dx to zero three is coming common take it out move that three on the other side make it vanished and then factorize so on factorization yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the two factors that I'm getting here, x minus 1 and x minus 3 equals to 0. And once when you equate both these factors to 0, the x coordinates of the two turning points are coming out to be 1 and 3. Now, substitute these 1 and 3 1 by 1 in your additional function which is this, get X the corresponding Y coordinates. Okay. GQ so I can, it's zero for the first one. So three zero and um, second one is uh, three one and three. No, one and four. One and four. What? Oh yeah, one and four. So 3, 0, and 1, 4, these are the turning points. And now I do not know which one is maximum point, which one is minimum point. The second derivative will help you to find out the nature. That's what, if you find some questions, we'll do that. But presently, they're not asking, so we're not doing that. So Now, determine, okay, now here, now they're asking. Determine whether each... Uh, uh, turning point is maximum or minimum show clearly how you decide okay now get the second derivative second okay um, so, uh, we can come yeah. here and, uh, hmm. okay it is um, 6x minus 12 that's it So the second derivative six x minus twelve. Now, one by one, we are going to substitute these turning point x coordinates and see what answer either positive or negative they are giving us okay so for three zero i'm getting a positive value that is six, uh, six. okay so this is yeah. the minimum. and for why it is minimum what's the reason uh, Do you I, know that? I think yeah yeah um if it is a Above zero, like the difference if it is above zero, uh, that is minimum. So, or if it's below but zero, why? like negative. 
Oh, yeah, that's right. Why? Yeah, that's it. That's what I'm trying to ask. Why? Yeah. You see, here, just try to understand here. You see, this was our graph. Okay. Let me pick up this snapshot and then I'll show you through some little work, a geometrical work here. So if I just Now you see once when one four this turning point one four. I just try to move it to the right side of my x axis. I'm moving the this point one four in this direction. So of course it's going to move along with the curve trajectory. Yeah. So if it moves here or here or here anywhere. I pick up any any of these points and I try to draw a tangent line here. This tangent line is actually the second derivative. This was the first derivative and these lines are the second derivative. Okay, so this point, 1, 4, once when it starts sliding over here and I just try to draw a tangent line on these points, they are downhill to right so the slopes are negative. So if the second derivative is giving you a negative answer, it means the given turning point is a maximum point. Are you getting me? Hmm. Similarly, if we talk about your minimum turning point, this minima, now if this three zero point is moving along with the positive x axis, so it is going to move here or here or here. If I draw a tangent line over here, that says that is going to be interpreted through the second derivative. It is uphill to right, so the slope will be positive. So if the second derivative is coming out to be positive, it means you are handling minimum point. Okay, the given turning point is minimum. Of whose coordinates you have inserted and you got the answer positive. So this turning point is minimum. Got it? So, this answer is positive. There it is. Okay, so overlap in the work. A second. This answer is positive, 3, 0. The 3, 0 is second derivative of 3, 0 is coming out to be positive. It means 3, 0, it what? Three zero is minimum point. Yeah. Got it. And one four is giving the second derivative negative, so it is a maximum point. Okay. So write it down. Okay. Then yeah. Three zero is minima or maximum point. You can write whatever the way you want. Okay. And one four is a maximum point. That's it. We also call these turning points as stationary points. Why we call them stationary points? Because once when your point moves, uh, point reaches the turning point to some uh, small period of, uh, to a little extremely infinitely, uh, infinite as a small period of time, the point stops there. Okay. An extremely negligible interval of time. It stops there and then it slides down or slides up. So that's why you call these points as stationary points as well, okay? You also call turning points as extreme points because they are at the extreme positions, the maximum or the minimum. Both are the extreme positions, right? So you call them extreme points as well, okay? So that's hmm. it.
So first derivative helps you to find out the number of turning points. The second derivative helps you to find out the nature of those turning points. Now we move on. See our question A, 11, part A. I'm not doing this. I leave it for you, and I need you to factorize and tell me what are the factors of this turning point uh, for this uh, quadratic expression. Okay. Then it became, gives me 36, 136, 2, 3, 3, 12, 4, 9, 4, 4, 9. Okay, minus 2x squared, uh, plus 9x, minus 4x, plus 18. Now, um, let's see. Minus, minus x, 2x, um, minus uh, 9. And then the other one is what? Yeah, um, minus 2. 2x minus 9. So minus x minus 2 and uh, 2x minus 9. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So I just say that I'm applying this negative sign on 2x minus 9 factor. So I can write one factor as x plus 2 and the other factor as 9 minus 2x. That's more beautiful. Okay, so that's it. Uh, they, 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 these are the factors of the given expression, quadratic expression. Then they are saying it use differentiation to find the coordinates of the turning point of this curve. And show you're working. It is, I don't know, uh, 5 marks. It is a 5 marks. So what you need to do, you need to find out the first derivative. Then equate it to zero, okay, and get the answer. So you see, this is a quadratic function, quadratic polynomial function. So it is going to have just one turning point, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. Why they have given you two, uh, okay, they have given you x and y coordinates. Right? So just one turning point you're going to have, just one value of x you're going to get. That's it. Now, y is 18 plus 5x minus 2x squared. We differentiate both sides with respect to x. Derivative of 18 is 0 because constant values have 0 derivatives. This is derivative of x is 1. Derivative of x squared is 2x. So 5 minus 4x is the derivative of this quadratic function. Now you just equate it to 0. So 5 minus 4x is equals to 0. This thing is giving you x value. 5 upon 4. Yeah. So x is 5 upon 4 here. Now you substitute this x value in this original function to get the y coordinate. It is 18 plus 5 times 5 by 4 minus 2 times 5 by 4 whole square. So 18 plus 25 by 4 minus 2 times 25 by 16. And then you take the LCM here. Okay, LCM is coming out to be 16. Uh, 18 into 16. I can do this thing through the calculator as well, but I'm just doing it manually. 18 into 16. 288. 
25 into 4 gives me 100 minus 50. So 288 plus 50 divided by 16. 169 by 8. Okay. So 169 by 8. So the turning point is having x coordinate 5 by 4 and y coordinate 169 by 8. You can also write these coordinates in terms of a whole number of a mixed fraction because they are improper. So you can write in this way too. And uh, Okay. Like that. Okay, so this is it. And then, uh, okay. Once it's done, now they're asking that determine whether the turning point is maximum and minimum. Give a reason for your answer. It's just a one mark. Okay. So, it is maximum or minimum why because the derivative second derivative is coming out to be positive or negative that's what you're going to write so we need to perform our second derivative test okay so it's too easy because your first derivative was giving you a linear expression this was the first derivative and it is linear so the second derivative is minus four am i right second mm -hmm. derivative is minus four so it is a negative answer so the given point is maximum so what you write, this is the linear first derivative. So you would want to write. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Wait a second. The second derivative is coming out to be minus four, less than zero. You just write. Turning point is maximum because, and that over here, because the second derivative test is giving negative result negative result or negative answer whatever you want that's how you write finish one mark all yours that's it okay okay Max. and now see here in part c they're asking you to sketch the graph on the axes below and uh show clearly the coordinates of the turning points and the points where the curve crosses the axis means you need to highlight there Turning points, y-intercept, and the x-intercepts, okay? That, that's what you need to highlight. So over mm -hmm. here, you see in your part A, you have already factorized it, okay? Yeah. So you're having two linear factors. If you equate it to zero, you can get the x-intercepts, two x-intercepts, okay? Because actually, this expression is equals to y. It is equals to f of x, okay? So y coordinate is zero, these two linear factors equate them to zero, get the x intercepts. Turning points are already, you know, we just uh, find out, we have just explored over here in this part. We know that, whatever it is. What we need to highlight further is your y intercept. So how you find your y intercept by substituting x values zero in the original function. The y is coming out to be 18. Okay. Yeah. So y intercept will be 0, 18. Let's come here, a little here, a little here, where we have uh, taken out these uh, linear factors of the given expression. Let me just wait a second. Okay, vertex or turning point, 
is 5 by 4 and 169 by 8. Am I right? I need you to give me a favor. Express these coordinates in terms of decimals. What it is going to give you? 1.25, if I'm not wrong? Um, wait, what, what did you say? 5 by 4 in decimals. Oh, it's 1.25. Yeah, 1.25. And 169 by 8 is what? 21.125. Yes, thank you. That's it. And now, my x-intercept. So x-intercept intercepts. You know that y is equal to that expression and it is equal to 9 minus 2x times x plus 2. In order to find x intercept, you put y value 0. Yeah. So these two factors will be equated to 0 1 by 1. So in this way, I can find out my x intercepts easily within no time. So x is minus 2 and x is 9 by 2, right? Or 4.5. So the mm. x-intercepts in terms of uh, two, two, uh, uh, in terms of coordinates of two tuples, you just write minus two zero and four point five zero. These are the x-intercepts. Now, what is left? Y-intercept. We have just done that. Y-intercept is 18. eighteen. Yeah. So y-intercept is zero eighteen. So how I write? I write 0, 80. So now just focus on these four points. I need to uh, draw my axes here. So uh, on which quadrant do I have to focus more? Which quadrant I have to focus less? I have to focus, I, I need to find out that. So what I need to do, I just see that uh, out of these four points, this one, this one, this one, and this one. What is the maximum value of x you can see? The maximum value of x is 4.5. The minimum value of x is what? The minimum. What is the minimum value of x coordinate you can see? Minus two. Yeah. Similar, the maximum value of your y what is it? No, isn't the, one, one, isn't the maximum minus 2 and minimum 4.5? No. Minimum means the great, the maximum means the greatest value. Minimum means the least value. Minus yeah, 2 is the, the smallest. 4.5 is the biggest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, maximum value of your y-coordinate in all these four points is 21.125 yeah. and the minimum y-coordinate I can see here is uh, zero okay so I need equal uh, positive and negative x-axis x-axis and I need more positive y-axis I have nothing to do with the negative y-axis yeah so I will draw my y-axis exactly in the middle of my x-axis. I will just draw like this. And I will focus my positive y-axis more as compared to the negative y. So let's turn it into a solid line, a little enhanced, and my Okay. I can take half centimeter equals to one unit or one centimeter equals to one unit as well on my x-axis. It is going to be fine, just fine. Okay. 
So this is it. So one, two, three, four, five. Four point five exactly over here. So four point five zero point is here. Okay. And uh, one, two, minus one and minus two. So minus two zero is here. These are the x intercepts. As far as your y in uh, uh, y coordinates are concerned, what scale shall I take so that I could cover all these big values? I'm having maximum value up to 22, right? So I need at least 22 readings here. So if mm -hmm. I take one centimeter uh, equals to five units, that will be perfect. Okay. So I take one centimeter equals to five units over here. So five. 10, 15, 20, 25. Perfect. Okay. Now this is my 5. That's my 10, my 50, my 20, my 25. Now a little above 20 can be 21.125. That's what you approximate. Okay. That's what you approximate. And yeah. 18 could be... Uh, between 20 and 15, what is the midpoint of 35? It's 17.5, yeah? So a little mm -hmm. above midpoint, you can consider this as your 18. Clear? Now we assign here our y-intercept, 0, 18. And now what is my turning point? Turning point is 1.25 and 21 point. 1.25 is where? You see, between 1 and 2, I'm having 1.5. Okay? And between 1.25 and 1 is going to be about 1.25. Okay? So my vertex is here. That's my vertex point. Over here, I can draw my axis of symmetry for my support. Axis of symmetry is parallel to the y-axis, passing from the word x. I can draw it like this and I can restrict its length such that it starts from the word x point. And that's it. Now I'm going to draw here my curve and before drawing, you see, this point is your y-intercept, and it is uh, 1.25 centimeters away from your axis of symmetry. And uh, so 1.25 exactly, at the same length on the opposite side, you just draw a supporting point. So it will be a little here. That's the supporting point. Okay. Now, draw it. That's how you sketch your curve, okay? And uh, you can confirm this curve through your decimus if you want to, and just for confirmation. Minus. See, these are the x-intercepts, okay? That's your y-intercept, 0, 18. And this is your turning point, or vertex. I hope it's clear now. Hmm. Okay, so that's all for today. Inshallah, in the next class, we'll try to cover the remaining questions. Wait, um, tomorrow, I don't think I'll be able to take the class. So, okay, um, yeah. Is there a time we can do like uh, Saturday? 